could be late in the night, but I trust God it's well with you. Another wonderful Sunday to worship the Lord with you. How pleasant is it when we gather together. We may not be gathering physically, but for one reason or another, you are online watching with us. The Lord gonna minister to you greatly. I welcome you to International Christian Center Mombasa online service. I'm your host for the day, Humphrey Jumpa. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you. Thank you for this service. Thank you for the people that are here watching us all over the globe. We pray that the power of the Spirit will move. Your people will be ministered to and they will be rejoicing in the lives of your people. Thank you, Lord, because you're going to minister to your people in a great way. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. I welcome you all. I fix my eyes on you, the author of my faith, casting aside every sin in every way. I fix my eyes on you, I lay my burdens down, letting the cares of this world not fade. This one thing I seek That I may dwell in your house, O oh Lord, my King All the days of my life I want to gaze upon your beauty And seek you in this holy place This one thing I see That I may dwell in your house, O Lord, my King All the days of my life I want to gaze upon your beauty And seek you in this holy place Gaze upon your beauty and seek you in.
this holy place All the days of my life I want to gaze upon your beauty And seek you in this Savior, we fix our eyes on you, the author of our faith, the author of our life story, King of glory. It is such a privilege to know you, to love you, to serve your purposes, to be known by you, O King of kings and Lord of lords. Dear Lord, this morning, um, or even just depending on what time any one of us is logging in to listen to this service, we come before you and we say, King of glory, you know what? We've been trying to look at all the wrong places. We fixed our eyes and our hope and our help in all the wrong places. But today, Lord God Almighty, as we have sung this song, Lord God Almighty, in worship, in adoration, and as a commitment, King of glory, that our eyes will be fixed on you alone, that we will we look up to you, the author and finisher of our faith. We will look up to you, King of Glory, to be our provider. We will look up to you, King of Glory, to be the one who protects us, out of our, who protects us, who watches over us, who is our rear guard in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, we fix our eyes on you as the one, dear Lord, who is our healer. We fix our eyes on you, King of Glory, as the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. We fix our eyes on you because your words says that promotion does not come from the east or from the west, but it comes from you, oh God. And so this morning, I fix my eyes on you. This family of believers who are tuning into this broadcast are fixing their eyes on you. We are allowing you and asking you to come into every situation in our lives, God, and take over in the mighty name of Jesus. Because God, there seems some, some situations that we are facing that if you do not take over, if you don't speak a word, if you don't show the way, if you do not give wisdom, oh God, it will be the end of us, King of glory. But we are trusting in your word that says that you will never leave us, never forsake us in the mighty name of Jesus. And therefore we have a confidence and an assurance that as we fix our eyes on you, as we give you our troubles, as we give you our concerns, as we give you our issues, oh God, you will deal with each and every one of them according to your wisdom, according to your timing, according to your will and purpose for our lives because God you know us best you know Lord God Almighty the seasons and times that we are in so God would you come through for us in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ we fix our eyes on you and dear Lord I know this is not what the world says the world says try to look for a quick fix. The world says try to look for a solution. The world will say try to look for a plan B. But we fix our eyes on you the author of our lives, the one who knew us from our mother's womb, the one who knows us, O oh King of glory, inside and out, the one who knows our thoughts, our desires, our pursuits, our longing, our will, our purpose, King of glory. Therefore, we can trust everything concerning us. We can, con we can, we can tr entrust our children to you. We can entrust our education to you. We can entrust the nation of Kenya to you, oh God. Especially in a period like this, when the rains are falling, King of glory, and it seems as if it's all doom and gloom, my master, we fix our eyes on you. You who brings down the rain. You who brings down the rain and trust that, dear Lord, even though it rains, Oh Lord God Almighty, it will not overtake us in the mighty name of Jesus. It will not be what destroys us because your word, oh Lord God Almighty, you spoke to Noah and said, I will never destroy mankind by rain in the mighty name of Jesus. I will never do this again. And so God, we have a promise of your word. We will live and not die even though the rains fall. We will live and not die. And therefore, God, would we pray for moderate rain in this nation. Rain, King of glory, that causes food to grow. Rain that is not destructive. Rain, King of glory, that is... Um, that is a
affect him, that is effective king of glory, that will come to the ground and cause there to be growth and multiplication in every area of our nation, that will give us food security for the year and in the years to come in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We fix our eyes on you, Lord, to deal with the issue, king of glory, about accidents. Father, we've been hearing of many accidents on the roads, on the highways, Father. We pray, king of glory, wherever that spirit is, oh God, it will go back to where it came from in the mighty name of Jesus and that your children shall dwell in safety. They will go out and they will come back home safely. They will rise up and they will sit down safely in the mighty name of Jesus because your word says that the one who watches over us does not sleep neither slumber in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We fix our eyes on you. We fix our eyes on you, Lord. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus. Your word says in the book of Matthew, Heavenly Father, chapter 14, the story of Peter. Dear Lord, in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a storm, Peter says, Jesus, my Savior, Lord, if it is you, if it is you, King of glory, then call me out to come. Then Peter gets down, gets out of the boat. He walks on water and goes towards you, Jesus. Many times when we read this story, the only thing we remember is that Peter doubted at some point and he began to sink. But we forget that for several minutes or several seconds or even an hour, we are not told the time frame, but for several minutes, hours or seconds, Peter walked on water because his eyes were fixed on his Lord. His eyes were fixed on his master. And so today, oh God Almighty, we fix our eyes on you. We want to believe you and trust you with whatever situation that we are facing, with whatever thing, oh Lord God Almighty. We want to fix our eyes on you concerning our nation and commit it into your able hands and say, Lord, there are things that are happening that are not right, King of glory, but we entrust our nation to you and believe that God will give us the wisdom and understanding of the seasons that we are in as the, in, in, in Kenya and be able to know what to do and how to pray appropriately for this season in the mighty name of Jesus. We fix our eyes on you, God, concerning our city of Mombasa. God, would you give us wisdom and discernment on how to pray and how King of Glory to assist and to and to have our, our county flourish even in a season like this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We fix our eyes on you so that we can receive instruction from you, oh God. And like Peter, Father, we fix our eyes on you. And I say, I dare say, God, we will walk on water. We will come out victoriously on the other side. No weapon fashioned against us as a nation, as a people shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not doubt. We will not look around. We will not listen to the naysayers. Oh God, we will focus on you. We will focus on your voice, on your leading by your Holy Spirit. And we will go where you're calling us to go. And we will do what you're calling us to do for the glory glory and honor of your holy name. Father, I pray for the body of Christ this morning that we will fix our eyes on you and tell many about you, O oh God, that our gauge, King of glory, will be straight towards you, that our focus will be about telling people about Jesus because we understand, King of glory, that to have life, to have Jesus, rather, is to have life and life more abundantly. To have Jesus is to have eternal life in the mighty name of Jesus. So God, would you help us, especially in the household of faith, in the churches all over the nation of Kenya, cause us to be people who make disciples, cause us to be people who tell others about Jesus, cause us to be people who pray others into salvation in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because you are the most important person, most important thing in our lives. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration. And all God's children say, Amen. And Amen. And Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I encourage you, fix your eyes on Jesus. And you will walk on water. You will walk through whatever situation you find yourself in. In Jesus' name. I want us to rise up from our feet. Huh? Rise up on your feet. Not from your feet. On your feet. <laughs> rise up right now. And let us declare this song that Jesus is our firm 
foundation. Yes, when you have Jesus as your firm foundation, you cannot be shaken, you cannot be moved. Rise up on your feet. Let's sing, let's dance. Jesus is our firm foundation. God bless you. to declare that song and you are able to sing and you are able to dance because truly 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 I tell you Jesus is your firm foundation amen now it is time for us to give we see giving or rather we have been taught that giving is part of how we worship God worship is not just about singing songs it's not just about dancing it's not just about lifting hands or bowing down or being prostrate on the floor it's also about giving out of the abundance that we have and so at ICC Mombasa we believe that giving is worship and that's the opportunity I want to give you right now there are various ways that you can give at ICC Mombasa through our account number through our pay bill number through Sendwave, through the website I'll allow, I'll allow Alice to come and let us know how to give at the tail end of my prayer but I just want to pray about our giving right now and this is just a polite reminder the Bible says give and it shall be given to you give and it shall be given to you and so you have to start by giving in order for something to come back to you. Amen? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. We magnify you and exalt you. We thank you, King of glory. 
for the abundance of resources that you have given each and every one of us. I know sometimes it's possible for us to look at the little that we have and wonder how can we give? But your word says to give, not necessarily out of abundance, but even out of the, lim of the little that we have, because giving is worship to you. Giving, King of Glory, is a step of faith that we take in order to partner with you in the things that you are doing at ICC Mombasa, in the city of Mombasa, in the nation, in the missions, King of Glory, that we get to give even outside of this nation. My prayer, dear Lord, for myself and for my sister and brother who is watching, is that God, you will cause us to be excited about worshiping you with our giving. We pray for these finances, that God, they will be used for the work of the ministry, that they will be stewarded well in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that as we give, O oh Lord God Almighty, we will not lack in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will not lack in any way for the glory and honor of your name because you are a faithful God and your word says that you watch over your word to fulfill it. And so as we walk in obedience, would you watch over your word and fulfill it in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen and amen. I'd like to invite you and give you the opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. All of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now. There are several ways in which you can give here at ICC Mombasa. If you are giving through M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 488508. And for account, you write offering or tithe or special offering or fast fruits or whatever it is that you are giving towards. You can send an RTGS or write a check to International Christian Centre Mombasa. Our account number is 100,000 and our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. And finally, you can give through our website at iccmombasa.org. Simply click on the giving button and follow the instructions on the page. Thank you so much for your giving to the work of the Lord. God bless you. Wow, and here are our announcements for the day. As usual, prayer circle every Monday to Sunday on Zoom. Please, plug in. Let us pray. We are encouraged to, play, to pray all the time without ceasing. On Tuesday, kindly remember our prayer service from 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Please, join in. Don't miss. Announcement number two. We are beginning our discipleship classes and we invite you to plug and join in. We have Walking in Financial Freedom, we have Cut Blanche where you have to write your, your freedom story. We have Intentional Parenting for those who are parents and those who are intending to be parents. Please plug in and we have Anchor, our core discipleship class. Please. If you are interested, contact the church line on the screen for more information. And here we invite the preacher of the day. And you will be blessed. Welcome, Pastor. I'd like to say good morning to the ICC Mombasa family or uh, any other person that is watching and following this. And I recognize also that some of you, it's not after, it's not morning, it's actually afternoon or evening, uh, wherever it is that you're joining in from. Allow me to say a big welcome to the ICC Mombasa YouTube family, to the ICC Mombasa Facebook family, and any other person who might be passing by and you came across this. It's good to have you here today, and I believe that God will minister to us richly. Today I'm sharing uh, with us on a topic that is both profound and transformative. Missions, it is the heartbeat of God. It is missions giving uh, today at ICC Mombasa, and uh, I'd like to just say to us, even before I get to talk about uh, anything, that it's good to have you here, and uh, we need to act, we need to reach out, we need to spread the word of God. Why? Because it is in the act of reaching out, of the act of spreading his word, uh, that uh, we get to touch God's heart and attract his attention and favor. 
in fact, not just grace and favor, uh, but uh, we, we literally uh, attract the attention of the living God when we get to the place where uh, we begin uh, to walk in missions. That's why I say it, it's the heartbeat of God. And uh, for my many years in ministry, allow me to say that uh, I have not come across any other issue or any other area that is so unparalleled, uh, you know, by... Uh, the, the way that it moves God or impacts God. I have seen a small church that uh, is a missional church or a missions giving church and engaged in missions, attracts the favor of God and the blessing of God. And you look at them and you begin to wonder, uh, you know, because they're incomparable. You know, and so if a church or an individual wants to be able to touch the heart of God, they need to become missional. And so this is the heartbeat of God. And uh, as we look at the Word of God and as we dig into the Word of God, uh, I'd like to just uh, begin by alluding to something that Jesus, uh, you know, the Bible tells us about him. In the book of Luke chapter 19, verse number 10, the Bible says he came to seek and to save the lost. That was his mission. And then he passed it on to the church. In essence, when you begin to engage in missions, you are literally doing what Jesus came to do. You are continuing on with the assignment of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And allow me to say, there is where we attract His favor, His grace, and His attention more than anything else. Think about it. And there are many scriptures that we'll read today. Uh, but uh, think about it. May this uh, j just tie you to come to the place of saying, this is going to be my holy purpose to do that which Christ sent me to do. I want us to explore together from the word of God how embracing the call to missions not only aligns us with God's will, but also positions us to receive his abundant blessings. It positions you to receive God's abundant blessing. Think about this with me for a moment. Think about this. A church's true measure is not found in the number of, of uh, the seats it, it, it has, but in the depth of its commitment to missions. In fact, if you're writing that statement, let me just read it again the way I wrote it down. A church's true measure is not found in the number of its seats, but in the depth of its commitment to missions. It's in the, our commitment to missions that our real impact and measure as a church is uh, truly measured and established. Imagine with me for a moment, a church where everyone acts with purpose and direction, inspired by God's love and compassion. A church that is active on a daily basis, pursuing, you know, to reach out and to let the world know about Jesus our Lord and Savior, and what he has done for us. You know, that, that's, that's the focus of that church. Allow me to say that's a missional church. And we are called to be a missional church. Not just imagining it, but it needs to become our reality. A church that is on mission, God's mission, on a daily basis. Today, we are digging into God's word and looking at the essence of missions. Not as a mere church activity that is done by a department, but a lifestyle for every person who is part of the church and uh, is, you know, aligned, every one of us aligned, uh, you know, for, for this mission, this heartbeat of God. When we engage in missions, we touch God's heart in a unique way, attracting his attention, favor, and grace. Church, our actions reflect our priorities. And when our actions align with God's mission, we live out our true purpose. Can I say that again? Our actions reflect our priorities. And when our actions align with God's mission, we live out our true purpose. Before I give you uh, three points, actually four points that I want to give you today, allow me to just pause here and say that uh, churches have mission teams and mission committees and mission departments because they have forgotten the real mandate why the church exists. When Jesus was ascending back to heaven, when we check out in the scriptures, we see uh, you know, his last words, his last words. And in Africa, we say that a man's last words are so, so important that we need to, be, you know, to hold on to them and uh, just ensure that we do them. When I was growing up, I remember there was a family uh, near our home and, um, you know, 
the, the old man of the, of, of the home passed away. And there are certain things he said when he was dying. And uh, those things shook that family. They were well to do. They had resources. They had, uh, uh, you know, things that uh, he had accumulated over time. But when he was dying, there are things that he said that completely changed that family. Um, because there's this land that was supposed to be sold. There's land that was supposed to be given to another family. No one knew that he had another family. But there was land he saved that needed to be given to that family. And then there's uh, the allocation that he did, you know, to the family that we knew, the family that he lived with. And uh, all these uh, things, uh, you know, he said when he was dying. And it changed that family forever. Why? The words of a man when he's dying are very important according to African culture. And if we were to use the same in our context, and, and let me just say, uh, you know, by the way, this is not just uh, something that is African culture. I see it in the life of, uh, of Jacob also when he was dying. There are certain things he said uh, to his, uh, you know, when, when he was blessing the sons of uh, Joseph. And uh, because of that, Manasseh and Ephraim were considered to be tribes in Israel because of the words of Jacob when he was dying. Why am I bringing that up? Because we are looking at the words of Jesus when he was dying, when he was, you know, his last words, when he was about to ascend and go away. And those words should mean something to us as a church. They need to ensure, they need to bring us, in fact, if I may say this, they need to bring us to the place where, you know, churches no longer have missions departments or mission teams or, or, or anything like that because it becomes the main thing that the church focuses on. Listen to this. I'm reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse number 18. The Bible says that Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, because all authority in heaven and on earth has been given, uh, has been given to me. That's what the word therefore you know, means in that context. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I'd like to just pause there and say, we cannot claim that Jesus is with us to the very close of the age if we are not doing the assignment he has just talked about. And that's why I say missions attracts God's attention and favor and grace like nothing else. But that's not the only thing that I want us to look at today. Because we have a mandate to go. But let's look at Acts chapter 1. The words of Jesus again, just before he ascends up to heaven. Um, the disciples come to him in Acts chapter 1 verse number 6. The Bible says they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Verse 7, he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. And allow me to say there are many people that have debated on me on uh, just some of the things that I'm preaching about today, uh, insisting uh, that uh, because I keep saying Jesus is not coming until we finish the assignment that he gave to us. Um, and, and for me, it arises out of this verse. Jesus said, it is not for me to know the times. My responsibility, your responsibility, our responsibility as a church is this. Verse number 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. This is the very last words of Jesus. He said, you shall be my witnesses. That's what missions is all about, is becoming his witnesses, is going into the world and telling them about Jesus. Telling them about Jesus. And so I repeat again, church, our actions reflect our priorities. And when we, our, our actions align with God's mission, and we have shown us from the text of scripture what we are supposed to be about as a church, then we are able to truly live out our true purpose. Four things I told you. Number one, number one, it's important for us to understand the heart of God. 
It's important for us to understand the heart of God. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 35 to 38, the Bible says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every, every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into, the harvest, into his harvest fields. And so Jesus, you know, later on, when he's saying, go into the whole world, he's actually sending us into his harvest fields to do this that he had already told the disciples, pray that the Lord of the harvest may send laborers into his harvest fields. Why? Because people are harassed and helpless. Jesus looked at the crowds and he felt compassion because they were confused. They were helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Here, you know, Jesus doesn't just see people. He sees their needs. He sees their wounds. He sees their troubles and their helplessness. And he tells the disciples, pray. It is this response right here that, that Jesus makes in saying, pray that the Lord of the harvest may send laborers. You know, this is what defines a his mission and our mission what is supposed to be our mission we are supposed to see their needs see their wounds see their troubles see their helplessness see their needs so that we can step out and do what we ought to do when we embrace missions we adopt the very ethos of christ active compassion that's what we see here and you and I are supposed to, to adopt this we are supposed to embrace this this is supposed to be what defines us when you walk through your neighborhood, when you walk through your city, when you go through your towns, when you go through your neighborhood, your workplace, do you see people? Do you see their need? Do you see their, their wounds? Do you see their troubles? Do you see their helplessness? Does it move you to take action, to do something? Because as I said later on in Matthew 28, when Jesus is saying, you know, go therefore and make disciples. He's actually sending us to go and do what he had already said, that the people are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And so this directive right here, you know, is from our Savior and Lord. And it's very clear. It's our faith, you know, to step out and go do what he called us to do. We are not supposed to be stationary. We are not supposed to lock ourselves up in the church and refuse to go out there to touch and impact and influence people. We are supposed to go out there. Our faith is supposed to be mobile. We are supposed to be mobile. We are supposed to be active participants in spreading the good news and telling the world about Jesus Christ. Our greatest contribution to the kingdom of God may not be something we do but actually someone that we touch, somebody that we raise, the way we, we, we impact people, the way we influence people. And so I ask you the question, do, where do we need to begin in order to touch and impact people? We begin by seeing their needs, by seeing their troubles, by seeing their wounds and their helplessness and stepping out to do something around us. You and I need to look around we need to look around us. We need to look into our communities, our workplaces, our neighborhoods, and begin to see these people because they are there. We need to look at our nations, you know, beginning with the nation of Kenya, for example, for me and uh, for you, wherever it is that you are, beginning to look at your nation. We need to begin to notice the needs, the confusion, the lack of direction, and step in as bearers of hope and guidance. You know, Jesus is the shepherd, and no one should continue to live like sheep without a shepherd. No one at all. We have been sent, we must go, and we must tell the world about Jesus. God's heart is for the lost, and he sends us to go and seek and save the lost. That's our mandate. That's our responsibility. Friends, we must go with love and compassion. We must go to touch and heal. We must go to change and rise. We must go and make the difference that God sent us to go and make. That's God's heart. That's God's heart. Number two, because I've just told you, what is God's heart? It's missions. Number two, what is God's heart? It's missions. Number two, mission attracts God's favor. I already said this, and I'm going to run through this very quickly because you need to see this. You need to see this. Mission attracts God's favor like nothing else. I've read through my Bible. 
and for the years that I've been in ministry, allow me to say there's something about mission that just moves the heart of God. I once was looking at uh, two churches, a, a small church of about uh, 100 people and uh, a, a large church of, of about 2,000 people and just comparing them. And one of the things that I noticed, you know, that, uh, you know, the presence, the power and the move of God was so evident in that little church because they were so missional in what they did. They were so missional. Things like healing and miracles were so common in that little church. Something that was not there in the large church. And, and one time I, I had the opportunity to sit with both pastors and here's what I told them. Listen to me. Mission attracts God's favor. Yes, I am preaching to you what I shared with those men of God. Listen, Acts chapter 10, verse number 1 to 4. We read the following about Cornelius, a devout Gentile. Please underline that. Note that. A Gentile. The Bible says at uh, Caesarea or, or Caesarea, depending on how you want to pronounce that, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Now, uh, after, after saying that, listen. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God come to him and say, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked, the angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Your prayers and your gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. In other words, Cornelius, you, the, the things that you've been doing, seeking to touch people, seeking to impact others, seeking to make a difference in other people's lives has come before God as a memorial. Do you want your prayers? And the things that you do and the way that you live your life to be before God as a memorial that attracts his attention and causes God to release angels for you, then here is what you need to do. Missions. Cornelius was devout. He feared God, gave generously, prayed continually. His lifestyle of mission, because really his lifestyle... Even though he was not a believer in Jesus Christ, his lifestyle was very missional and it attracted God's direct attention, leading to a pivotal moment in the spread of the gospel to the Gentiles. Because this is what opened the door for the apostle Peter to come to his house and preach to him. And this was the first time that the church began to reach out to Gentiles. It was the door was opened by a lifestyle that was missional. And if we are going to impact our generation, and see the favor of God and experience the grace of God in ways that we have not done before. We've got to become missional in the things that we do and in the way that we do them. Oh yes, allow me to say, missions attracts the hand and the favor and the grace of God like nothing else. Dorcas, in Acts chapter 9, uh, ch chapter nine we find her story. And I'd like to just uh, jump on that and, and be able to read it for us. Because you need to capture this. You need to capture this. I told you, missional uh, living or, or missions, you know, attracts God's favor like nothing else. And so Acts chapter 9, jump in there together with me. Let me read this text of scripture for us. Listen to this. Listen to this. The Bible says in verse number 36, Acts chapter 9, in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydia was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydia, uh, they sent two men to come and, uh, you know, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Why are they sending these two men to go get Peter. We will see that in verse number 39. Peter went with them and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the windows stood, uh, all the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent all, all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed, turning towards the dead woman. He said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented 
uh, had to them alive. This became known all over Joppa and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. Allow me to say this is the same place that Peter is called, uh, you know, called for by, um, you know, Cornelius. This is the same place where, uh, you know, the angel sent that they would go and get Peter. And so God knew that Peter is in Joppa, uh, in, in that region of Joppa. And listen to this, listen to this. What attracted, what caused this woman to b come back to life was her missional living. It was her missional living. Allow me to just pause here and say, could it be that our generation, we are not seeing a lot of people coming back to life. You're not seeing miracles of, of resurrection because you've forgotten to be missional. You know, <laughs> because... By the way, I keep hearing people debating about uh, people being raised uh, from the dead. How many people do you know in the book of Acts who are raised from the dead by the apostles? How many do you know? According to my reading of scripture, I know of two. I know of two. And one of those two was raised from the dead because of her missional living. And I'd like to say to us today, my friends, you and I have to become missional in our living. If you're going to experience the power of God and the grace of God and attract God's attention like Dorcas, like Tabitha, we've got to become missional. We've got to do this. We've got to do this. Martin Luther said, God does not need your good works but your neighbor does. God does not need your good works, but your neighbor does. And I hope you caught the rebuke in that statement because there's a rebuke for us in that a statement that I've just uh, given you. What's a rebuke? That you and I need to do something. We need to go and do something. We need to take action. And this, this does not come easily. It's something that we need to grow in. Teach yourself to be missional in your living. Active compassion, showing love, caring for people. These attracts God's favor. And it opened the door for a Gentile to hear the gospel and for a woman to be raised from the dead. We need to engage actively with God, whether it's donating to a cause, volunteering our time, or simply praying. Let us make our faith visible through our deeds. Become missional in your living. Each act of kindness is a seed of divine favor. Become missional in your living. Number three, number three, the blessing of generosity in missions. In other words, there's a blessing of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, that comes upon us when we live a life of generosity in missions. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6 to 9. Allow me to read this because uh, what have we talked about so far? I've told us that mission really is the heart of God. Mission is the heart of God. Number two, I told us that a mission attracts God's favor. And I showed you uh, this in scripture. Number three, I am saying to us there's a blessing there's a blessing in generosity towards mission. The blessing of generosity in mission. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6 to 9. The, the, the Apostle Paul talks about this blessing that comes from giving generously. You know, missional giving. Here is what the Bible says. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a person who gives cheerfully and God will generously provide all that you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. Do you want your deeds to be remembered forever? Do you want to leave, you know, having all your needs meant and having plenty, uh, you know, left over to share with others? Then become missional in your gifts giving. Become missional in your giving. This is not just about material blessing, but the enrichment of our souls and the overflowing capacity to do every good work, to work in the things that God desires. We've got to teach ourselves. We've got to become a people that, that are missional in our giving because there's a blessing of generosity in missions. And I call us today to this place. Winston Churchill made a great statement that I want to use today. He said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Church, listen, let us be a people who make a life 
by what we give. Give not out of obligation, but from a place of joy. Give, you know, to, to touch and impact people. Pray, plan, and ensure that giving, you know, for you is missional because you give towards mission. Become, let it become a part of your life. Contribute to missions through your finances, your skills, and knowledge. Even the, the small contributions, because it doesn't matter how much it is. The Bible calls us to do it and to do it cheerfully. To give, to touch other people, to impact other people, to influence other people. When we do this, there's a blessing. There's a blessing in this kind of giving. And as I close today, allow me to challenge us and to give us, to give us four steps to living missionally. Uh, the, the, this, I'm going to do this very quickly. Four steps to living missionary. Because this is my altar call today. Number one, see the need. See the need. Keep your eyes open to the struggles around you, to the needs around you, to the pain around you, to the brokenness around you. Oh yes, you've got to see the need and be moved by compassion just like Jesus. Oh yes, he saw the people that were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Could you... Step in and begin to be one that sees the need. Number two, pray continually. Remember I said this is my altar call. Pray continually. Let, let prayer be part of your daily life, especially mission of praying. Praying because you've got to be a people that live with a focus on missions. It's not a department in a church. It's not something you do once a year when there's a missions month or when you're sent out for, for a mission. No, mission is supposed to be something that you do on a daily basis. Pray for missions continually on a daily basis, not just for your needs. Pray for the global mission field. Pray for people who live without knowing God. People separated from God. Pray for the people around you. Oh yes, pray for the nations. Pray for the unreached people groups. Let's make prayer for missions a part of our daily life. Prayer aligns our heart with God's heart. And if you're going to pray prayers that move mountains, then they need to be prayers that touch the heart of God. And how do you do that? Pray mission of prayers. Number three, act boldly. Take concrete steps and get involved. Don't let it just be something that is done by a few people. Oh, no, 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 no. Jesus did not send us and say, oh, we need a few people who become experts in missions and we'll call them missionaries. He said this to every believer. Go ye therefore. And we need to do exactly that. We need to be bold and take actions. Sign up for missions. Support a missionary. Be a missionary in your workplace, in your neighborhood, wherever it is that you live. Go and act boldly towards missions. Number four, give generously. Make giving a habit, especially missional giving. Whether it's your time, your talent, or your treasures, let generosity define your life. Yes, we need to do this. Our most lasting impact often lies not in our accomplishments, but in our influence. Missions allows us to influence the world in a profound way, drawing us into a deeper relationship with God and extending His kingdom here on earth. Today, ICC Mombasa and every person listening to me, I challenge you to, to adopt these four steps into your daily routine. What are the four steps? See the need. Pray continually, act boldly, and give generously. Let's adopt this into our lifestyle. Let, let's be a people that live missionally. Even as we get to give today, I don't know whether you had already given your offering, but allow me to say I am calling you today to go ahead and get on to m and uh, send your giving to our PayPal number 488508 and mark that account or that giving as missions and send it today. Allow me to say our giving will definitely touch lives in Mombasa, will definitely touch lives in the coastal region through our campus extension because we started a campus in Yali, we are beginning a campus in Muatate, and we are seeking to make a difference uh, you know, in the coastal region through nourish and flourish touching lives, impacting communities, providing food, making a difference across the, this region. We are seeking to touch lives across our nation and even beyond as we partner uh, to give to missions through the Kenya Assemblies of God. Let us make missions our lifestyle. I call you today to make missions your lifestyle. And as uh, I, I bring this to a conclusion, let's just go ahead and pray right now. I want to pray for you and I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to ask the Lord to cause us to be a church on mission, to be a mission or church, making an impact in everything that we do. 
And so, God, I ask of you today, ICC Mombasa, make us a mission of church. My brothers and sisters, every person listening to me, make us a mission of people. Help us, Father, to do these four things that we have talked about. And I pray that, dear God, will do this to honor and to glorify you. Open our eyes so that we can see the needs. Oh, God Almighty, help us to pray continuously for missions. Help us, my God, to act boldly and may we give generously to touch the course of missions in our city of Mombasa. Oh God, in our county of Mombasa, in the coastal region, my father, the counties of Kwale and Kilifi and Tana River and Lamu and Garissa and Taita Taveta. Jehovah God, I pray that we will touch this region so powerfully for your kingdom and for your praise and glory. And I pray, dear God, not just for these counties, but across the nation of Kenya and even beyond. My God, help us to do your will and and to accomplish your purpose. Make us missional in our living. Because this is my prayer today. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters. As you get involved in missions. Allow me to say. May God bless you. May God hold you. May God guide you. May God keep you. And may God work his purposes in your life. In Jesus name. Because missions is the heart of God. It attracts the favor of God. <laughs> oh yes it does. And as I said, mission, mission, involvement in missions attracts the blessing. There is a blessing when we give. There is a blessing when we commit ourselves. May God bless you so much. Remember, go ahead and give. The details are on your screen. Everything that you're giving today, whether it's through our website, you simply go to www.iccmobasa.org and click on the giving button or whether you give through Mpesa or you give by direct deposit to a bank account. Allow me to say, missions. That's what you're giving for today. Go ahead and God bless you as you give. Thank you so much. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye.